Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Israel International All-Season Competition, checking in with team number 5554, the Poros. Uh, you know, I got to be honest with this team here. Definitely notice them. They have uh, one of, the, I mean, one of the coolest mascots. It's a Poro, right? So you got to love that. Uh, lots of enthusiasm from the team at this competition as well. And their robot, by the way, is absolutely fantastic. We'll be doing that overview. Uh, some unique things with this robot as well, too, we'll be talking about, uh, including a, a drive shifter, using some sheet metal on their drive, uh, some different things, and autonomous as well, too, we'll be mentioning. How we speak more about this robot, by the way, I have Adi, Ivory, and Elon. And Paul Rose here, definitely a team that had to be on your radar. Let's find out more about what this team brings to the table here on Behind the Bumpers. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu slash apply. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. So Adi, let's start out on your robot talking about uh, your drivetrain. So you decided to do a, some sheet metal and a, uh, a shifter on your robot. Uh, so, so a couple cool unique things. So let's get a nice close-up, take a look where it is and tell us more about it. Okay, so as you can see, we have a basic tank drive, though we do have a couple of improvements to it. Um, one, of this, one of those improvements are um, we made the entire shield of the, of the robot out of sheet metal. This is in order to make it super um, stable and durable. In addition, we also have a shifter in our gearbox. This is so we can push other robots because this is a very... Um, um, hard game. Where is the shifter located? So the shifter is located inside near the gearbox, as you can see there. So all of those uh, additions are all of those additions are made to be to give to get us as close to swerve drive as we can, so we can actually compete with uh, the other robots, which almost all of them have swerve. We don't, and we figured out this is much easier to do and much more practical. Let's start to move on to your robot and talk about your uh, intake here. So you guys have a couple different interesting configurations, right? Because you got some tape uh, that's on this side. You're doing some mechanum wheels uh, and even an Omni wheel as well here too. Talk to me about what's gone into your intake and any changes you might have made through the season. Okay, so we have a forearm arm intake, which opens on both sides with a pneumatic, with double actuated pneumatic cylinders. So the intake itself is made out of two um, PVC rollers with a, with a grip tape on top of them, which makes it very, uh, very well, which makes it intake very well. In addition to this part of the intake, we have a static intake. Um, the static intake is something we added later in the season after we noticed that our bo um, that the balls used to jump out of the robot when they got in. So we added this static intake, um, powered by a um, separate motor, with uneven uh, configuration of wheels to make it come inside, so we can intake two balls at the same time um, without them getting stuck inside. So um, after the intake, they c they, we have two wheels that get them into the next, um, into the uptakes. And that's it. So Ibri's going to talk more about that, uh, your storage, and we'll also go to your shooter as well, too, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, as you go in here, you can see kind of some of the belting uh, that goes through. I'd uh, love to just hear more about uh, that design concept, uh, how it's worked out for you, and uh, uh, what's all gone into it. OK, so let's uh, pick up a ball and see. Uh, don't shoot. Okay, so first thing after the intake, we have here a, a checkpoint for the balls. First, we determine uh, what color the ball is. So if it's a red color and we're a blue team, we shoot it out. And if it's a blue color and we're a blue team, we keep it in. And we also have an IR sensor, which uh, determines if the ball is really here or not. 
Okay, and we and all this uh, system is powered by Falcon motor back there, so we can uh, control it with a PID controller. So every so we know exactly where every ball is in the system. We also have an upper uh, color sensor, so the drivers don't need to. You can't really uh, see it if you like zoom here. Uh, so the drivers don't need to count the balls. So the ball counting is <laughs> automatically reset. Okay. So we pick up uh, two balls and we storage them there. And then we have uh, our turret uh, and the shooter. Uh, let me uh, demonstrate. So uh, you can see that uh, the turret is uh, automatically aligning with the target all uh, the game. Also, uh, we have an uh, adjustable hood which adjusts to the angle so we can shoot all uh, around the, the field. Uh, something like we didn't uh, do uh, last year in the regular season, we didn't have this upper wheel and we thought that the backspin of the ball will make the ball more uh, consistent in the air which is true, but we didn't uh, build the hub very good and we didn't uh, put uh, the polycarbonate there. So we didn't uh, see the, the balls uh, jumping out because of the spin. So we added uh, this here. It's in a gear ratio, like, like in the end, this uh, spin and this spin, like this spin like twice as fast as this, but the diameter is a half. So in the end, we shoot the ball with a little amount of backspin in order to make the shot and the ball not coming out. The, f the shooter is uh, powered by uh, two Falcon motors, so we can control it also with the PID, and we shoot only when the shooter is in the correct speed, in order to make all the shots a uh, consistent. Uh, that's it for the shooter. Let's talk about some uh, autonomous functions on your robot. A lot of programming that's gone through. I know you're doing some path planner as well too uh, with your robot. So we'll show off a few things on screen. Anything uh, that we can show off on your robot? Talk more about that. Okay. So firstly, I want to talk about the autonomous functions, uh, autonomic functions during the teleop. So in teleop, the turret is uh, searching for a target autonomous automatically. And uh, while it's, it's finding the target and it's aligned about, uh, it aligned to it, and the the, uh, the shooter accelerates to the uh, the shooter and the hood uh, aiming to the to the distance uh, measured by the limelight. And when everything is at aim, uh, we rumble the controllers. We rumble the controllers. So the drivers actually know when it's safe to shoot. Uh, we didn't want to shoot automatically because we might get uh, pushed uh, uh, during the, the teleop. Uh, so we didn't do that. Uh, another thing we do during the uh, teleop is the uh, auto count balls, and uh, we're using both uh, infrared, infrared sensors and the color sensor in order to eject the upper cargo if we if we collected the opponent cargoes uh, opponent co uh, cargoes uh, so drivers can see how many how many how, what is the count of the cargoes during the, during the match and is the and is the turret mode enabled or disabled and if the cargo and if the cargo eject is enabled or disabled, so so the turret mode is actually sometimes we have problems during the first matches, uh, which the limelight or the turret uh, somehow can't work or we hope they don't. But if they do, we have a backup uh, program, which then the turret goes to, to angle zero, to the forward of uh, to to the zero angle of the robot. And uh, we start to rumble the drivers controller, the driver which actually moves the robot. We rumble its controller, and when uh, the limelight see a target, but not necessarily not necessarily aim at it. So then, when it's ram when his controller rumble, he then press the button which automatically aim uh, the drivetrain to the 
to the to the target, uh, and then we and then we rumble the operator controller joystick to shoot the button. Can you show us some of your path planner? Talk about auto, and then we'll wrap up on your robot. Yes, of course. Uh, so we designed our uh, autonomous uh, drive drive plan uh, drive pass uh, using uh, using pass planner. Uh, first thing, the, the first thing uh, we we doing a strategy is to do a, a, three, a three ball auto. Uh, I'm talking about the season before they were uh, we were able to start with two cargos. So now we're using the same the same pass for the three for the three uh, cargo auto, but we also added another uh, this, the second part which able us which enables us to goes to the six auto cargo. Uh, we also have uh, some some other pass like if nothing works and uh, and all we need uh, like if we don't need to do anything if uh, strategically other teams do this, the other cargos we can just shoot one cargo and then go backwards and if the turret doesn't work but uh, anything else does work. We have uh, autonomous three cargos. Okay, fine. Uh, so another thing we have during our teleop is an auto climbing button. Then uh, the driver only has one button, which enables it, which has, which enables him to sh to uh, climb to the next bar uh, automatically. Uh, not not all of the members of our team like the autonom the autonomous climbing, so we, we make it autonomic and not autonomously, which means every time you you climb a single bar, you press the press uh, the button, uh, and then you release it you release it uh, when you ended the climbing. So uh, last thing to wrap up on this robot is talking about is some of the mechanical aspects of the climber as well too. I know on your last match, I uh, had some climber uh, uh, issues where you're still fixing it right now as we're airing this, so that's okay. But let's talk to us about a little bit of the mechanical that's gone into it. Okay, so we have two static arms and two telescopic arms, which so these are held with a, a, force, a consistent force spring and the pneumatic uh, pancake cylinder. So. <laughs> when we press X on the controller for the uh, for the first time, those shoots up and the cylinders goes in, and those are raised to the uh, needed uh, height, and then we close the the cylinders here, and we catch the bar, we pull on, and then we have uh, here a, a one-way door mechanism. Uh, we latch on. And then we release those, we uh, tilt them back, and, and uh, we grab to the next bar, and again and again. Uh, one uh, important or uh, interesting fact, so this is an, it's, uh, especially uh, plastic from uh, the Air Force. Uh, one of our uh, mentors uh, gave it to us. So it's very light, but uh, very strong. Uh, this is. Uh, it was uh, so strong, so we even uh, took a uh, uh, material from inside, and it still uh, holds the, bo uh, the robot. Uh, even uh, only one of them, which you could see in uh, our last uh, game. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us about your robot once again, 5554, here in Israel. Looking forward to seeing uh, what your team brings in future years as well. Thanks a lot, and good luck here at the competition. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Continue your excitement of robotics at Kettering University with their combat robotics team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Find out more and get your application started at kettering.edu apply.